My highest paying job is 38,000 a year. Um, that's with my bachelor's degree, man. And I want to say last year, we probably did about 1.2, 1.3 around there. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today's guest is a beast at wholesaling. He's been playing this game for a very, very long time. He's going to help us to improve our real estate marketing and a few other things. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Nasser El Arabi. Nasser, what's up, bro? How you feeling? Hey, what's man? going on, Oliver? Thank you for having me on, man. Man, it's my absolute pleasure. I apologize for whatever technical difficulties we might have experienced prior to this. Uh, it does happen at times, but, you know, this is, this is the game we play, man. You know how it goes. So, Nas, I, I went over a light brush on what you do, but if you could please give them a full-on background about who you are, all the great things you do, because you've affected many lives and you've changed a lot of lives just by being yourself. So I'm going to let you have the floor. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, uh, man. And thank you for the kind words, bro. You know, all praises due to God, you know. So first things first, man, you know, uh, he enabled me to bless others. But uh, with that being said, man, I've been involved in real estate since 2007. OK, I've been involved in real estate since 2007. And I, I bought my first fix and flip in 07, inspired by those TV shows, me and my man. We end up losing uh <laughs> seven grand a piece man so um for those who wasn't around wondering like how do y'all get money for a house we were young like i was 24 um but um basically the way we got the way we got money for the house was at that time that was um literally right before the the mortgage crash all right so the housing crash all you like literally like when people say all you needed was a post to get a home loan like they're not lying like all you needed was a post there was something called stated income loans with the you walk in the loan officer um, office and he tell you how much he tells you how much you make a year, and <laughs> boy, you you get a house. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's that crazy. <laughs> That's so That's not bad. That's yeah. Not bad. So it's that sick. So I started out there. Um, so uh, we end up losing seven thousand a piece, so fourteen k on that. I moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina, in two thousand eight from New Jersey. And from um, me uh, moving down in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, um, what happened next was I um, got into, um, I bought some rentals, okay? I bought a rental okay. in 08, the traditional way, making $10 an hour, you know? I worked in the call center, bought one in 09. After that, they told me my debt to income was too high because my original strategy was to collect rentals and exit the job place. So um, I found out, I read the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Found out about the RIA, Real Estate Investment Association. Joined my local RIA, uh, Metro Line of RIA here in Charlotte. And from joining that, I learned about wholesaling houses in 2010. Learned about wholesaling houses in 2010. I got a mentor in 2011, did my first wholesale deal in 2011. I got fired from my job uh, in September of 2012. I've been wholesale wholesaling since uh, September of 2012. Since so I got fired, my highest paying job is 38,000 a year. Um, that's with my bachelor's degree, man. And I want to say last year we probably did about 1.2, 1.3 around there, uh, gross my company. That's not bad, man. Congratulations. That's good stuff, bro. Thanks, bro. Listen, man. You yeah. So I've been following you for. 2013, 2014, Damn. I think I started following you. Yeah, I've been following you for a minute. Um, I was deployed, and I, <laughs> I started watching you, and I think it was Max, y'all doing a bunch of stuff. As a matter of fact, the first time I was introduced to you, you were doing a development in Charlotte, and Max had come by to visit you, and you were walking him through the whole thing. How did you, and before we get into the marketing part, I, I want to hit, there's a couple things I want to get to. I want to talk about your time and development. I want to make sure we talk a little bit about your recent trip to Ghana, if you're open to that. Um, uh, that, yeah. seemed, that seemed real. That seemed really uh, eye-opening just for you. And then for me to watch you vicariously live that through you was eye-opening for me as well. So let's dive into the, the, the development part first. How did you get started going? How did you get from the wholesaling part to development? 
how did I get from the wholesaling part to development is what you're saying. Um, yeah. Basically, all right. Uh, one of my lenders, I was going to okay. rehab a house. And one right. of my lenders, um, he came to look at the house. It's in a neighborhood down the street from the Panthers Stadium. Carolina Panthers, for those who don't watch sports, that's football. Keep and going. keep, Sorry. oh, my boy know about it. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, I had a deal in there, man. And I called him up. I said, look, I got this uh, 800 square foot house. It's a two bedroom, one bath house. I need 90000 for purchase. And then I need 100000 to fix up. Uh, once we're done, we're probably going to be 1,300 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. And what I'm going to do is sell it for um, 280 He said, all right, let me come look at it. So we come, we, we're, we're standing there. We're looking at the house. He said, man, uh, how much going to be in construction? I said about 100 He said, well, did your contractor go under the house? I said, no. Mm-hmm. He said, well, um, when okay, it's going to be more than 100 because he didn't go under his house. This foundation, he going to find problems in this foundation. I'm telling you, he going to find problems in this foundation. He said, bro, you might as well knock it over and um, start over. I said, man, I ain't never done that. I said, I'm never, I, I never done that before. Right. He, uh, he said, uh, well, um, man, I'm telling you, man, it's going to be a lot of problems because once they rip this up and they do your extension, they're going to find foundation issues. Man, it ain't worth it. Just knock it over and start over. I said, man, listen, I don't want to mess up your money, so I don't even want to do that. So he was like, because I, I said I never done it before. He was like, well, he said, I, he said, I don't want you to mess up my money, but right. what if I partner yeah. with you? Would you do it? I said, yeah, let's do it, absolutely. So that's the way we did it, and um, that that's how I got the new construction. Wow. So the, basically, it, it was just somebody coming to you. And he was basically saving you behind. Because he knew it was gonna go south as soon as you got in there and started getting the work done. He knew was, he, he knew for sure it was gonna go south, which he was I probably end up spending about 120, 130 on that. Um so he he knew. I mean, I was I would I mean he I would have been able to get it done, which right. you know that 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 happens. I mean, you you fire contractors, you going way over now and all this. So I I've been there before multiple times. So yeah, but yeah, he, he was right, like you said, you're saving my behind. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've seen some people I've seen, a, I've heard of a guy going, I think he went almost a year and a half doing one property and he was already, he bought it for 70. He was well over like 150. And I was, at, when it came to, at that point in time, it was like 150. And I was like, I want to say five or six months ago, but he had been into it for about a year and a half already. And the, and the pot just kept going. Like it was a, it was a money, it was a money pit, but I think he ran into those same problems. So it's good that you had somebody like that. But that kind of speaks to it being a team sport in real estate. It's not a one man show, um, which a lot I mean, of people go off. Yeah, I, I got a deal like that right now. I, I I did a partnership and I'm mm-hmm. paying for it. Had it for over a year, and I'm I'm well over a hundred thousand in in that uh, my own money. So yeah, that that those things happen. I'm hopefully I get on the market this month. But yeah, man, like those things happen in this business, man, and. Uh, so, um, unfortunately, you know, so like you said, it's a team sport. Right. So right. as a team sport, when something go wrong, it's either, are you going to sit there and blame that guy? You're going to sit there and say, well, look, I got to do what I got to do because I got to get this to the finish line and it is what it is. So right. yeah, man, but real estate is a sport, is a, is a business where you could make a lot of money. Real estate is also a business. You could lose a lot of money. Yes, it is. Well, let me ask you this then, Nas. What's your guidance to those? Because you, you got a lot of students who follow you when it comes to wholesaling. I'm sure you had some people try, try and follow what you do when it comes to development. But what's your guidance to those people when they hear stories like yours or like the one you're going through and you've been in the game for plus 13, 14, 15 years? What's your guidance to them? Because that's a big fear that people are going to have to deal with, particularly when they start out in the real estate business or in wholesaling as well. Like it's just... You know, those ebbs and flows are real. It's, it's not easy to do this. It's simple, but it's not easy to play this game. Okay, so um, did my personal opinion, right? This is what I went wrong. I went wrong because I did a partnership with a contractor and I didn't require them to bring any money. I just, um, it was going to be, um, we wasn't doing a 50-50 split, but they were bringing labor. 
Right. Which so I messed up at that point. That was my fault. So I I took I take on the ownership of it and I'm um, gonna get it done. So if you're getting in the partnership, make sure you know the person's bringing something you don't bring. If you're getting a partnership with rehabs, bro, you you cannot get. In, it's I'm not gonna say you can. I people trusted me right. to get in partnerships with them with no money. One of my lenders always he always told me the one that did the partnership with the rehab of the new build, but I I realized why they always say, look, bro, I don't like to do partnerships because they always end up in court. This, that, and the third. On my side, when I got in these rehab or in these partnerships, they never ended up in court because I'm somebody who I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Right. I I'm not if Oliver, if you're bringing all the money. And um, you have the experience and I'm bringing the deal. I'm not going to argue with you that we need, um, uh, uh, what's that called? Quartz countertops. Hey, bro, look, grand is good. Oh, you say grand is good? Grand is good to me? Hey, bro, I'm the easiest guy to work with, okay? Right, right. It's, it's just that, you know, um, my, due to my fault, I didn't require them to bring money to the table. If I required them to bring money to the table, that would eliminate them up front, and I would have avoided the headache. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's, it's. I guess it's one of those lessons you just got to learn. I think we all end up learning at some point in time. That, I mean, it's all. It's part of the game, man. You can't let it, man. You can't let losses get to your head or your heart. Right. Yes, it's hard, man. But you cannot let that get. You got to keep your eye on the prize, man. This business is is hard. Success is a journey. You know, it's not a destination. You don't become successful and everything goes right because, you know, for for example, right? Um, right. Now, uh, Oliver, I, I want to say you came up during the same time as me. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably remember during the 90s, whereas the, all those athletes, man, and entertainers um, that were big names and now they're broke today. And, you know, yeah. when I say yeah. broke, living. You know, lower middle class or middle class, but they were successful at one point. But again, my statement: success is not a destination; it's a journey, bro. It's something that keeps going. So now you fast forward today; these guys are a lot more smarter. They're investing. They're investing their money. They are. They're talking to each other now, not like in the '90s, whereas guys didn't really talk in the off season. LeBron came in and changed that whole mind. Hey, bro, we're going to hang out, lot out. They talking. Hey, who you invest the money with, which is, is great for them. Maybe their employers don't like it so much. Right. You know what I mean? But it's excellent for them. So with that being said, man, you know, it's, it's all about just learning um, from not only your mistake, from the mistakes of others and doing the right thing, man. So, you know, I, I, I've been blessed because the, you know, the losses I've taken on stuff, you know, that can put you out of business, but I've been blessed and able to, you know, continue on. That's a fact. And, oh, for those of you who are trying to learn from mistakes, make sure you check out uh, Max and Nas, uh, makes Max and Nas site. It's one deal. Is it one deal away.com, Max, or is it? No, no it's one deal away. It's Max and Nas .com, man. Check out Max okay. and Nas .com, man. It's one deal go. away. There you go. I'm not getting any affiliates. Just so everybody knows who's listening and watching. There's no affiliate. I just like Nas and like Max. I want to make sure I get back to the people that I learned from. Hopefully y'all can pull some stuff out of as well. So, all right, let's get into the, let's get into the, um, before we get into Ghana, Nas, let's hit, let's hit the meat of the situation. Let's talk some about the marketing part because being in the field that you're in, both doing development, both wholesaling, uh, both hoteling, as well as all the other stuff that you've seen with some of the, the people who you run around with in your circle, what would you say are like your top five ways of, attracting real estate deals to you as opposed to you having to go and hunt them down. Um, can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Absolutely. What would you say is your top five ways of attracting real estate deals to you as opposed to you having to go and chase them down? Uh, I mean, well, in the course, you know, we talk about, um, we do three ways. Um, we, well, we recommend you, we got more than three ways in the course, but um, you got the ringless voicemail, the cold calling and the texting uh driving for dollars and mail right. right. but i my team we focus right now on texting and cold calling now why is that why you focus on cold calling and texting as opposed to the other three that's what's working for us man and if you come from the mailing the mail era where you had the mail for the deals man you know texting and cold calling is a lot cheaper than sending mail 
Yes, it is. Lord knows it is. But so here's my here's always been my question, Nas. And I've experienced a couple things. When living in uh, Kentucky, I was having better I was having better luck with taking like a red post-it note or a red note and putting it on the doors, right? As opposed to cold calling. I cold call, cold call, cold call. And man, I was hitting brick walls. Now, that could because be because I was a trash cold caller, but just argument's sake, <laughs> does the do you feel like the the tactic changes dictated by the location and then how do you figure that out when you do? Um, as far as the the location of what? I'm sorry. So when you're at let's say you're in like you're in Charlotte right now, right? You're in Charlotte, the deal's working out. You're doing, like you said, you're doing the cold calling and that part's working. But if you were to move to, let's say, uh, tap out of Virginia for whatever reason, yeah. right? And it's the door, door knocking is working better. How are you deciding when you go into a new market, okay, this is the tactic I'm going to use, or do you automatically just go to your default cold calling and figuring out from there? I always might go with my default, bro. Like, like yeah. with the text and the cold calling. I mean, eventually all this stuff is going to go away. Um, but right now it works, so that's what I'm gonna do. What works, right. you know? Certain markets you have to test in your market. You are right, bro. Certain markets, cold calling, and texting might not work. Then door knocking might work. That might work better. Because right. if you in the like, if you in them high end markets in California, ideally the um, like I know a guy who specifically works high end. Right. Um, you know, and I when I say high, you know, high end, I'm talking, you know, million dollars or better. A million dollars, you know, ain't ain't really, you know, that it, it can get more expensive than that where he the, the neighborhood he focusing. Well, in that area, letters and um letters and door knocking works best. The cold calling and text stuff don't work at all. Right. So it all depends on your area. You got a text, but with me, if I'm in the general market that I play in, like that. Three hundred thousand and below, then yeah, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of um, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of texting and cold calling. Nice. But let me ask you this. So then, how, what has been your kind of go-to skill with cold calling? Because you've done some cold calling yourself, and from what I've seen and what I understand, what I've learned from you and and a couple others, you're no slouch when it comes to the cold calling. That's not something I feel like you highlight that often. But you don't, yeah. you know, you're not a game when it comes to cold calling either. How'd you develop those skills? By practice. It's just repetition. Practice, repetition, bro. It's easy, easy enough, easy enough. So, all right, now let's now let's get in. So we talked about the the five deals, your background. We talked about your development, or not the five deals, the five ways to get real estate deals. There's one really interesting, and this is kind of a change after I've been following, listen, watching some of the stuff that you had going on IG for the last couple of weeks, your trip to Ghana, what was the most eye-opening experience about that for you when you took that trip? And what lessons did you learn from that trip that you want to bring into what you do now? Okay, so Ghana turned into a, bit, to a business trip, uh, running with over there with Max Master. I was going over there to party, have a ball, <laughs> you know what I mean, do all types of hood rat stuff in Africa. Right. You know what I mean? I was, I was ready to do all types of stuff they just wasn't used to. But, um, yeah, you roll with Max, man. It turned into a straight uh, business meeting. So, yeah. Uh, with that, yeah, yeah, bro. It was meeting, me meeting, me meeting, no club. Meeting, me meeting, me no club. You know what I'm saying? So, right. it was crazy. So, anyway, um, so, I right, as an adult, I, I'm from North Jersey. And North yeah, Jersey yeah. is diverse as hell, right? So we, right. we grew up with anything. Of course, similar to everywhere else, uh, growing up um, on TV, you watched the TV in the 90s, Africa, they was poor as hell. Um, uh, okay. poor, we that's had the, how the, they the fly commercials and stuff like that. The fly flying well, and all that stuff. 15 cents a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I, I knew I was an adult. <laughs> Right. We're talking to everybody because, you know, as long as the, all right, I don't know how to say this, but be you honest, know, just, I, just be honest, be free, bro. Be honest. I'm, be I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real with you. All right. Let's hear Like it. the more educated you are, and I'm not saying academically smart, right. but the more educated you are, mm -hmm. um, the more educated you are, the more um, open minded. If you notice, like, right, the, Races are normally not smart. I'm not saying all the time, 
because right. we know that the system is rigged, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Systematic racism. Racism are racism not always smart, but as you know, you're getting older, it was, you know, you be, you begin to talk to people and, you know, Haitians, Africans, whatever, they're like, yo, no, that's what they show y'all on TV of our country. Right. That country, our country is nice. You know, the people are beautiful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, as an adult, you know, I realized that being open minded, et cetera, and um, because they were depicted one way. Like Haiti's poor and dirty, you know. But Haiti has beautiful spots you can tour. Tour at. I've never been to. I've seen the pictures. I want to go. Um, and Africa has man. Africa is the motherland. Everything comes from Africa. So with that being, it's the richest continent. So with that being said, um, however, bro, I'm thinking these people in Africa is gonna be like poor right. and just yeah. gonna be happy that I'm there. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, he has the American dollar. You know what I mean? And just fall out. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm with you. Bro, nah, bro. That was that not was, the case. That was not the case, bro. Like, they got more money than us, bro. And right. I'm not saying, I, I, when I say us, I'm not saying the guys that's in the top 5% here in America as far as income earners. Top 1% is 400000 If you, I'm, bro, like, the reason why I say, some people are like, why are you saying I'm a money? Bro, I was in Accra. Okay, Accra, which is in Ghana. Okay. So that's West Africa. Right. Bro, there's no credit system. So that means they're high. <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, guys. wait, no, no, Nas. We're not just brushing over that. We're not just rolling past that. There's no credit system? So there's no, no loans, nothing like that. It's just straight up hand over fist cash cash money that's it that's it bro Dude. that's it bro cash money for everything bro no cars no. um now we were with some people who were trying to get the credit system to africa which i you know what i mean i'm not gonna say i, I i'm gonna say they're doing very well right. so in africa when god like there's no bankruptcy like if i don't got it i don't got it like you know what i mean like whereas here is <laughs> You know, now great. Yeah, right, exactly. So, all right, this is the way I explain it to people. Like, all right, so now the more you travel, the more you go outside the country. Okay. Hands down, bro, America is the the greatest place to live. Hands down, bro. Like, yo, like that is, uh, bro, for you to be an American, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Even with what they did to African Americans and all that, like, it's a blessing because if you're smart in America, right. you can yeah. leverage credit to wealth it's a fact that's a fact one of my one of my okay like just how you leverage um well like a, a real estate investor or leverage can be broke like me i was working the call center i was leveraging credit to buy real estate okay and create cash flow create additional in income one of my lenders he became a millionaire because he leveraged credit to buy stocks he said i should do balance transfer get the money and put it in the stock market and this is prior before um prior to home depot going public right so he would say i was um he said if you a management or more um any management position at home depot prior to going public you can um you can they would they let you buy a private stock in the company he oh, said wow. yo every year every quarter every year would just go up so he said it was a no brainer. He said, "Yo, he said I I had my wife take out credit cards to buy it." So eventually, in the late late nineties, um, in, <laughs> in the late nineties, he became a million. They say he um, he walked away with a net worth of like three four million cash though cash. So he was like, um, he he was like, "Yo," he said, "Man, my boss." When I told my boss for my two weeks, he said, "Are you crazy?" He right. said, "Bro, you know how much I worth? I'm worth twelve million dollars liquid, and you're leaving." <laughs> But it, it came to a point. He was like, "Bro, look, man, I'm not." Man, he's like, "Yo, look, man, I, ain't, I don't watch one of my kids miss all their sporting events." Right. He said he had another kid going to high school playing sports, so he was like, "I wasn't missing that." So he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna just tap out." And he got into real estate, and you know now he's a a, a major private lender in town. So, um, wow. yeah. So with that being with that being said, but. You can leverage your way to credit, and, and I mean leverage your way to wealth if you're smart. Not many people do in America. You, we course, know that in America, right? In America, people will run to go get debt, 
to appear that to look rich instead of being rich. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. That's what made IG popular. You think about it. Like people were taking pictures with toilet bowls, right? Next to a picture with water and acting like they was on a plane. Like that's how bad <laughs> that's how bad it is. So you really went out, bought a toilet bowl and bought a poster for the toilet bowl and put an IG to look like they rich. As opposed to going something to make themselves rich. Like, that's crazy. But anyway, I say that to agree with you, by the way, Nas. But go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, it it is. All right. So you can, America has, like, you travel the world, you're going to see the benefits America has. Now, there's a lot of opportunity in Ghana, but there's no credit, right? There's no credit system. So if you don't have the cash to buy it, like, you you got to figure out a way to get the money to buy it. So the development in Accra is city. Like Accra, you could compare Accra to a New York City, a Chicago, a major city here in America. Right. It's, it's not dirt rock. It's not people living in houses. They got apartments. Now, this is different. This is another reason uh, most people probably wouldn't survive over there because when you sign a one-year lease, you got to pay one-year rental um, um, payments up front. Wow. When you sign two-year, you pay two years up front. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is what they this is what they like. It's it's the cash system. So you figure, Oliver, if I buy the house cash, bro, you gotta pay me my rent cash, bro. Like so right. and that's the way it works over there. So um wow. all those nice cars you see, cash. Like people got the title to them. If their country, like we seen a bunch of we seen multiple G Wagons, which was surprising right. to me. If they, all right, they do have a business dealership over there, but if it's a car that they can't get, let's say a Cadillac Escalade EXV 2021 fully loaded here is going to run us about, um, I know somebody who got one, ran about 120, 120,000, and he right. paid cash. To get it to Africa, you probably going to pay about two, between 200 and 240,000 total. So that's just that, but you, that's just the that's just to get it to Africa. That's to get it to Africa. To get it to Africa. So by the time we get to Africa, you're gonna pay two hundred, two forty. So that's what they pay. And when we went to the the, the nights, we went to the club, bro. Like mm-hmm. I mean, granted, that's a club, so that can be a small percentage. But right. you know, I mean, we're in the top one percent here, so we rolling with guys. We we got connected with the people that's getting money over there. So right. we right. yeah we we yeah we we rubbing shoulders, you know, with the money. And we were just getting exposed to things and different business opportunities and things of that nature. And bro, let me just tell you, bro, it's um, it's crazy, bro. Like, yo, it's it's wide, it's wide open for opportunity over in Africa, bro. We was hearing stories about, you know, um, a street a street dude from the states, you know, last year. I I, I mean, um, he's a pretty popular guy, but he he he's from the states. Last year, he did nine figures in one year. Nine figures in one year, like it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of opportunity around there, man. It's a Ghana is. You might as well say a new country, right? Because they got their right. independence in 1957. For to, to, to your listeners, what that mean when I say a new country? They got their independence in 1957. So, prior to 1957, uh, well, let's go back. Slavery ended in America on paper in 1863. Right. Okay. So it ended on paper. So when I say ended on paper, um, to your listeners, what that what I mean is 1865, uh, June 19th, when we, when we celebrate Juneteenth, the union had to march to plantations to physically free the slaves. There was no social media, no TV. The the owners, the slave owners did not say, hey, look, um, y'all are free. So they had to come, you know what I mean, to, to physically free them. Right. Um, with that, with, with that being said, um, so 1865, slavery ended. Okay. Prior to that, most of the most of the Africans came through West Africa. The El Mino Castle was located in Ghana. It's about three hours from Accra. The uh, Brit, the British were uh, responsible for. Um, uh, kidnapping and raping these people and taking them to um, the New World. The New World was America. Okay? Other countries, okay? Um, other So, America stopped slavery in 1865. 
the the coast of Africa, they were still kidnapping Africans, putting them into slavery into other countries, and participating in illegal slave trading up until they got kicked out the the um castle in 1957. That's what got the guys independence. Okay. Wow. So when I say a new country, that's when like they're starting to, you know, now developing. They have a campaign like um, geared to African Americans to um, get people back home by giving them incentives and things like that. And I say get people back home, get people back to Ghana. So they they want to get skilled people there because they want to. They're now focusing on building up. Um, that's the play. Like for those who don't know, yeah, we know Dubai is a major tourist destination today. However, uh, 21 years ago it was all desert. But what happened was money came in. Money came in and built that up. So Ghana is working on doing the same thing. You know, with, hey, we need to get money, skilled skilled Americans over here, skilled people over here, and we're going to build this joint up. My problem is, like, with the, as far as the skyscrapers um, joint, is there's no credit system. So you really got to raise the cash. Uh, so you'll see projects that started and stopped because people ran out of money. Because, uh, yeah, you can get this building for $1.2 million, but it might need $15, $16 million to get done. After you get everything, I mean, you're talking about, you know, of course you might get quoted 8 million, but if it go over, you know what I mean? You, now you like, whoa, you told me I'm paying cash. I got my partners. Well, I got to pull out this thing. You know what I'm saying? So there's no credit system. Whereas prior to 1963, um, when America was focused on building out um, suburban American, uh, what they did was they gave the white developers um, lines of credit to build that out. And they took, they just couldn't allow African Americans to live in these houses. Um, and they, they did not allow, they wasn't giving no black person no loan. So a white guy can't get a loan to build out African American housing. So damn sure wasn't giving no to no black person. So with that being said, America got built out on credit. Whereas, you know, Ghana is now going through that process of building out. This is a beautiful place, beautiful city, and all of West Africa is on the water, man. So this is also that was also happening during like the redlining time, right? Where redlining was still going on heavy. Redlining was um going on um pre um civil rights and after civil rights. Right. And technically, yeah, red line, technically yeah, red it's, going. it's still technically happening a little bit now. Like it's still in some uh, some laws. I yeah. see I see it still still in some books when you write up, you know, you get the contract and all that stuff back. It'll it's still in there in some states, which is wild. After yeah, no, nah, yeah, line, yeah, still going today, but yeah, now that went on pre civil rights and post civil rights. Um that's how they, you know, kept certain neighborhoods um uh the way they uh white uh be, uh post uh nineteen sixty eight when the second right. civil rights act passed after Martin. Now, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna go back to Ghana. I, I got another question for you. Actually, it's actually about the book that you're reading right now. I know there's a book you're reading that you're kind of learning a lot of this stuff, and st- you've always the been color, learning. But the, the color, color of the law, of right? Law. The color of law. Well, man, you will look at everything if you are serious about if you buying back the block, buying rental properties. Mm-hmm. The color of law. Um, this individual, bro. Um, he breaks it down how African Americans were strategically kept out of the wealth transfer and housing in America. And he, I, so far, I'm in the middle of the book, but he has cases like lot like cases up to 2008 with the home loan crisis. He named the banks that were sued because they were doing um, it would. They were offering predatory loans to African Americans, even if they were seven hundred plus. They were putting wow. them in bad loan products, even if on they purpose. had a seven hundred plus on purpose, just because they were black. So this two thousand, but he breaks it down of how everything. Um, like so, one thing I didn't know, and I made a video about on my Instagram was mm-hmm. the first public housing was made for um, lower middle class white people. Okay, so what they did was they realized that um, black people needed a place to stay. So they like, yo, we don't want them in the houses in our neighborhoods. So what we're going to do, we want to build out suburban America. So 
they 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 offer all the white tenants um low interest rate loans in suburban America, and that's how they start to build out suburban Americans. And some of these housing projects, um, what they practiced um, was you had to be married. You couldn't have kids at a wedlock. Um, you had to be clean. No right. bugs, okay? okay? However, you recall decades later, they told black people, oh, you can't be married and, and live here. Oh, you can't have no man in the house and live here. Wow. Because they knew the power of having family structure. Right. They knew, all right, we ain't going to break it down to our side, but we're going to break it down on their side because we're going to put them against each other. So, you know, divide and, um, divide and conquer. I'm learning all in this book, The Color of Law. Guys, I strongly recommend you pick it up and read it if you're serious about, you know, building up the community, buying back the block. I've been buying in the hood since 07, since I got into business. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I try to offer affordable housing. It gets tough. A uh, reason why I say it gets tough because with gentrification, taxes go up. So unfortunately, I got to go up with my rent. But I do everything I can to keep the properties affordable. I still have um, uh, seven, $800 rentals, bro. Even though you cannot get them, I'm still able to keep some tenants at an affordable rate. But if you're serious about that, man, like that's a good book so you can understand why what happened and how we got to this point, man. You know, I've been Absolutely. telling my counterpart, my counterparts for years, like you can't get mad at your parents for not leaving anything behind because my my father, my parents were born with no rights. They they was born pre civil rights, so they ain't have all their rights. So you can't get mad at somebody where the law was strategically against them. They did the best they could to you know raise you. Now if you want to leave your kids something, then you work on that. And that book will tell you how it was intentionally done. So, for example, this is a town. Um, my grandfather fought in World War II. Okay. He was a veteran. What happened was in the GI Bill, when they came home, they pre, uh, when they went over there, they promised them um, that they can get um, these cheap home loans to buy houses. Right. And this one particular town, New Jersey, Leventon, they built it out for the retired, I'm sorry, for the veterans who came home from World War II uh, under one condition. No blacks, veterans, could be allowed in this subdivision. So what happened was that when the, um, those people died and their kids inherited that house, well, their kids inherited the house that was worth 300000 Meanwhile, the black veterans, their kids didn't inherit nothing but something worth very little because of where they had to live at. And that was purposely done. Bro, this is so. All right. So I'm in I'm in the military. Right. I had I had no, like there's certain things that I know. Right. I know all the shenanigans that happened when we got back from Vietnam and how how the military personnel were treated. And at this point, still a little bit to this day, were treated. But that part I didn't know. Like, I, tr honestly, and upfront, I did not know. Um, bro, I got to get this book. Yeah. I got to get the book. A lot of people didn't know, but that GI Bill after um, World War II didn't right. apply to, um, didn't fully apply to black people. So yeah, man, that um, so just keep that you know in mind that that GI Bill. So therefore, we got kept out of the wealth the wealth transfer. So right. now it's important yeah. for people in our age bracket, younger people, yo, get life insurance, bro. If you young. Yo, I don't have any kids. My father, my beneficiary. Just get some life insurance because you don't want to be a burden to somebody when they pass. In every religious community, regardless of religion, we all get the text messages and the GoFundMe links on social media when somebody passed because we got to raise money. You know what I mean? We in a different day and age. We can get life insurance these days, get life insurance, you know, buy assets so that you can... If you want to pass them on, if you just want to live good, just but buy assets, man. They kept us out for a reason, and now we have the opportunity to grow wealth. It's going to be hard, but what is it hard? Working a job for 30, 40 years is hard. So right. you pick your heart and pick the heart that's going to be worth it for you. So let me let me ask you this, Daz, and and this is something because I'm I'm really interested. It's something I've been working on. I'm working. I want to get to 625 doors within the next four years before I retire out of the military. But I want to buy black the block. How would I get started in doing that with somebody who doesn't have a, a crap ton of money? 
I'm not on Max Maxwell or Nas El Arabi's numbers right now yet. Quote me that. Uh, but <laughs> before I get there, how would I get started? What what kind of things do I need to be doing and looking at to get to that point where I can buy back the block and be effective that way? Okay. All right. So how can you get back to uh, get back to black? You got to identify a neighborhood you want to live in. The best, okay. yo, bro, information, bro, is getting, like, I didn't know this, right? When I first started buying rentals in 08, bro, I didn't know this. If I would have known this, bro, I'd have been so much further along. Um, something called the birth strategy. Okay. Buy, um, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. repeat. Roger that. Okay. Bro, you, all right. What I, my problem was, I was going to, Fannie and Freddie to get loans. Right. Nah, that's not that's not who you want to talk to. You want to build a relationship with your co- local community bank. Okay. Because they they keep their loans on the books. They are loan to an LLC. They keep them on their books. When I say keep them on their books, they don't sell to Fannie and Freddie. So no major bank is gonna um for a single family house that I know of is gonna give you a loan for your LLC. All right, they're gonna say, right. "Nah, we'll do, we'll do a loan in your name, we'll do a loan in your name," but they ain't gonna do an LLC. So, the local banks will do the, the loan in your LLC, and you can have more than ten properties. Oh, that's the key right there. That's that's the key because I've I've heard that, and this is the first time I've heard it. I had a mentor told me he said, "Hey, I can't get any more properties because I'm already at my line at my limit." So he had to change the way he was doing things. But he didn't, of course, he didn't know at the time, right? And this is what happens when you get somebody who you watch and you pay attention to, you learn. Go ahead, Nas, I'm going to shut up. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. Go ahead. Nah, no, it's real, bro. Because I, yeah, bro, I, I bought my second rental in 09. I tried to get my third. He's like, oh, now your debt to income too high. But if wow. I didn't know this information, I could have avoided all that. So, right. all right. If you have, um, if you're in a situation, if you have money, um, and I recommend you have money because you need a five thousand dollar reserve for each rental property you own, because okay. a rental property is not if it's when something goes wrong. So okay. you can have the greatest intentions in the world, but have a reserve because if that HVAC go out, you know, in the um, middle of winter and that's the heating source, they don't have to pay you rent if you yeah. can't afford to suck. replace that. Right. And they go to court and say, "Yo, I ain't got no heat." The judge said, "Oh, no, nah, you ain't got to get out of nowhere." So, hey, bro, like that will. That will happen. So with that being said, um, with that being said, that that's what will happen. Um, so you want to have a line of credit, some type of money put up. I recommend you getting like a hard money lender or a private money lender. And what you can do is you can um, a good site, a Lima One Capital, Lima, L-I-M-A, one, um, O-N-E, capital dot com. Like you get them maybe to finance um, the property when you're buying it, then you can refinance with either them or a local bank and you get your money back out the deal. And then you risk and repeat and just continue to build and build and grow that portfolio that way, right. just off that same money. And you know, when you, before you even get started in this, talk to your local banks, see what's their seasoning um, requirements, seasoning requirements. Hey, you gotta have that property three months, six months, one year, two years. I heard it longer, some people two years, whereas before we will refinance and let you get cash out that property. So that's an important question you want to ask these local banks, but you right. got to talk to the commercial department. So talk, ask, you could actually speak to the commercial department. If you got to break it down and be like, yo, what you mean? You, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to buy rental properties in my LLC. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to send you over to this guy. And then just let ask them, once you get over to the right department, hey, um, what's your season of requirements on refinance? Oh, well, we asked for six months. We asked for one year. Uh, we asked for three months. You know, they, they'll let you know. Right. I like it. I like it. That's great advice. Nas. I, I apologize. My head was down for those of you watching because I'm writing notes. I'm Listen, I'm not playing. I'm taking notes because this sounds like something you can do with duplexes, triplexes, and quads as well, which is exactly what I want to get after getting that 625 doors. All right, now, so I know you're a busy dude and – we got, oh God, I want to talk some more about Ghana, but um, I know you're a busy guy. So let's talk, uh, only two questions that I ask at the end of each episode. Um, and, and what that is, is, oh, sorry, for those who are watching, 
If you'd like to ask a question, feel free. Um, Nas, if that's okay, Q&A, we do a short Q&A if some questions come through in the next five, five or six minutes. In the meantime, though, I ask two questions. One is what we call Troop to Task, Nas, and that's where you give the listener or the viewer one thing that they can do right now to change the path that they're on to be effective and to get to the place where you're at as we speak. So I'm going to give you the floor. Okay, so you said to get where I'm at. All right, so I was going to just put give you out some general advice, man, to do what's right for you. Just because, you know, real estate was my vehicle does not mean it's going to be your vehicle. But to get where I'm at, man, first things first, I would say start to read self-development books. I started reading at 26. You know, that was late in life, 26. That, that was stupid of me. So, and when I start to read and apply what I was reading, that's when my life started to change at 26. But why wait? You know, the earlier the better. If you're older than 26, it is never too late. So with that being said, start to read self-development books. Find out what you want to do and go after it. Now, if you want to get to my position, read, learn everything you want about, um, you can about real estate and start driving for dollars, okay? When I was doing my first, when I first started my journey, I read a real estate book and then a self-help book. Um, real estate, self-help, real estate, self-help. And I'm driving for dollars because this word is full of negativity. You have to pay your dues when you get into business. You're going to go through a process. You don't, you don't start in um, August and then get rich and by October. It doesn't work like that, okay? So with that being said, it's a process, and you got to go through the process. It took me eight months to get my first deal. It took my partner, um, Max, three weeks to get his first deal. He made right. fifteen grand on his first deal. I made three uh, two thousand on my first deal. So everybody's path, everybody's journey is different, different. but it's going to take time. And so that you won't give up, I strongly recommend you read self development books. You watch um, uh, motivational speakers on YouTube listening to audio books so you can prepare yourself for the process. I like it. Great advice. What's your, what would you say is your favorite self-development book thus far that you've read? All right. Um, man, I got so many, but one that really affected my life, man, and changed my life stemming Graham. You can make it happen, bro. Prior to that, man, I used to always blame everybody else, man. It was Oliver Perry fault, man, that I work in the call center, bro. Why well, make this put out of the dog? This ain't me, man. I had to take ownership, man. I don't I ain't man, I got a, a 1.8 in high school, bro. 1.8 GBA in high school. Cheated all through college, bro. I ain't never apply myself to nothing. So I always took the easy way out. So I got the easy um easy results. You know what I mean? Like this is I right, you wanna do easy? This this <laughs> This is the easy result. Now answer the phone to get full out of power. So I had to take ownership of my life, man. Take responsibility, man. I just started doing that going forward man that yo is nobody's responsibility to ensure that i'm successful i gotta ensure i'm successful so yeah man i just had to take ownership man bro no listen no judgment i i got out of college by the skin of my teeth i talked my way out of college that's how i knew i had a silver tongue that's 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 how i ended up deciding all right my podcast i know i can talk so i'm gonna just I'm gonna just go with what i know i talked my way out of college i am not mad at you bro at all all right so, hey, what, school what school you finished at i went to virginia state university Shout out Virginia State University. I what apologize. Graduate? I'm not. I uh, graduated in 05 is when I graduated. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, yo, see, me and you had it easier than the kids now. Bro, oh, I, I graduated in 07, but I used to um, buy papers on the internet and turn them in. <laughs> <laughs> you just, uh, you didn't even edit them. You just full on bought them and turned them in. No edit, no nothing. No nothing. <laughs> I didn't even read them. I wouldn't even read them. So I just buy like, the topic. If it's a doctor, yeah. A teacher, <laughs> a teacher called, called me out only one time, but yeah, man. Like, bro. That's, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Listen, I am not mad at you. I get it. It ain't it ain't easy as it was, and it's still not easy now to get out of college or and just graduate, particularly when you know it's not let's be honest, some of us it's not our strong suit. It just is what it is. You got the Gary V's, the Nasers, you've got the Maxes, you've got the Trumps, cats who don't make it but so far, but my God, on the back end, they're making it they're making it happen some way, somehow. Um and that's it's just the game. That's just how it goes. But that self awareness is just like you said. It goes back to the books you read. The self, having the awareness to know that, and just be okay with who you are. So next, Nas, let's. Uh, I'm gonna ask you this question. This question is tough. It's the toughest question I normally ask. 
And what this question is, what question do you wish you were asked more often? And what's the answer to that question? Um, well, damn. Okay, so <laughs> what question I wish I was asked uh, more often, man? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't really say, man. I mean, if ask me about neighborhoods, man, ask me, you know, about um, the history of, you know, um, real estate and development, like what we talked about earlier, like, you know, whereas um, black people couldn't get loans to, you know, to, to get fair housing, the FHA, you know, uh, like the stuff like that. I'm into that. Like one thing in high school and college, the, bro, it's been time where that was, Black history was the only class I passed and got the best grade. So, wow. you know, that's what I'm interested in. That's what I, I'm passionate about. You know, I mean, that's my history. So with that being said, man, you know, ask me stuff about that, you know. Um, yeah, man. So um, and I, I answered those, you know, you talked about Ghana. So that's that's what I would have to say. <laughs> no, nah, man, I like that. Honestly, I appreciate that. That's dope. Matter of fact, if it's OK, at some point, we'll have to get you back on because that's something I really, really want to get in deeper to. Because your knowledge on that, I knew it was deep, but bro, you hit me with some stuff. Like, I'm going to have to do my research before I get you on again next time. I'm going to have to read like three or four books yeah. and write a dissertation first. And a matter of fact, I'm going to turn in a thesis to you. I'm going to let you grade it and send it back to me. Let me know, <laughs> let me know how I do. <laughs> hey, my mother, man, you know, uh, may God be pleased with her, but my mother, man, that, bro, as a kid, bro, she would drag us down to the African American Museum, the, the Wax Museum down in Baltimore. I say drag me because as a kid, you want to sit out on the play. You don't care about history. Yeah, you ain't worried about you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the turtles is on. We out here watching the turtles. Yeah, Ninja Turtles, Darkwing Ducks. Anyway. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so, yeah, man, she um, used to, she started young, man, and told me young I was going to college and like young, reading, young, library card, reading. You know, she was a, she was a teacher. She graduated from an HBCU, North mm -hmm. Carolina Central University. So, yeah, you know, she, started and then as a kid you know you just into it like oh wow yeah 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 you know so yeah, yeah man credit to my mother man she passed when i was 14 and uh in 98 but credit to her bro but yeah bro we yeah shout out to moms um bless her heart bless her soul thank you for giving us such a wonderful dude out here in the street to uh to help us out with all the stuff we're figuring out yes. so with yes. that said bro that's we're definitely gonna get you back on if it's all right um, I'm going to hold you to it because I got you on camera and it's recording and we've had at least four or five people look. So four or five people hold me to it to make sure I reach back out to Nas at some point in time. But Nas, bro, thank you again so much for coming on, brother. I want to make sure I give you the floor real quick so you can put all your connection stuff out there, your IG, your site, whatever products, whatever you want to do. I'm going to give you the floor so you can knock that out. So all right, cool, bro. Uh, well, look, look, make sure y'all... Um, Hit me up, Instagram, Real Estate Duro, YouTube, Real Estate Duro. The new ebook is out, right? I know this is the hard copy. I don't sell the hard copy, but the new ebook is out. How to Flip Houses Like Burgers 2.0. That's out. The you, If you want, if you don't trust me, you don't know me, if you go to um, fliphouseslikeburgers.com, I'll give you the first three chapters for free. And then if you decide you want to purchase more, you can. Um, but it's a step-by-step. -step. It's little fluff um more information that on how you can uh flip houses like burgers to start wholesaling etc um we got the course out um uh one deal away to get you the wholesaling three to five deals a month but if you just need the ebook um or the course hey that's your decision if you are uh, you can go to maxandnas.com and register now i strongly suggest you get in because we will do a price increase soon we're talking about so um yeah that's basically it man um so holla at me, man. But I, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I love it. I love it. So for those of you who did not hear, go to those sites. Matter of fact, in the show notes afterwards, I'm going to pull out the information. I'm going to make sure I drop you in the site so I can make sure I put it into the show notes of this. And um, yeah, make sure you go check out Nas. Nas will change the way you think about quite a few things. I promise you. And you're going to run into Max. It just happens by proxy. They're boys. They're tight. It is what it is. And don't judge Nas if he's wearing Hornet stuff. He's a Hornet. Doggone it! I think he should always wear Hornet stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I was gonna give you. You gotta find. We gotta find you a Larry Johnson jersey. That's what we need. We need Nas 
in a grandmama jersey out in the street. That's what I want. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You got yeah, man. I, oh my man from Jersey bought me one, but it was too big, man. He got me. I'm a large. He got me the extra large joint. But yeah, I'm I'm a Hornets fan, bro. We got um LaMelo Ball. We just bro, signed Jello. So we playing. got Jello. I don't know what he offered, but last year I was pleased with the the, the direction we're going yeah. in as a Hornets fan. We didn't make the playoffs, but I'm pleased with the direction we're getting better than we was. So, you know, our future looks bright. So hopefully, you know, Jordan could get us in the right directions into the Eastern Conference Finals or the finals for the first time in Hornets history. Facts. Listen, you I'm a Hornets fan as well. I was born in Carolina, grew up a good chunk of life in Carolina. So Tar Heels, Hornets, Panthers, Hurricanes. If it's Carolina, I'm there all day. I'm with you. The mellow has been uh has been a blessing to say the least. That mess is crazy. How how good that boy has been. Like it's it'll make no sense. Rookie of the year, didn't he get just just not too long ago? Got rookie of the year, bro. Absolutely got rookie of the year, bro. He came in ready because he had the professional experience from across seas, but he just came in just playing like, whoa, smoking. this guy is smoking. Yeah. My man was smoking. My man was smoking. Yeah. I'm a, oh, so- um, even, even though I'm a Jersey boy, I always grew up Tar Heels, bro. Tar Heels. Tar, my mother's um from Carolina. Yes. My father from Carolina. Yes. So tar, tar Heels, Tar Heels, Tar Heels. It's on my bucket list. I was talking to uh, Max about it. It's on my bucket list. I got to go to a Duke Carolina, Carolina game. game. And, and the, ideally in the Dean's Dome. The in Duke, the Dean Dome, yep. Yeah, I got I got to do it. I've been wanting to do this as a kid. So I told him, you know, get his, get, get his money ready because, you know, he got to go. You know, listen, <laughs> listen, I, listen, I need you to let me know when that happens. That's on my, no lie. And this is not for camera. I know there's two of y'all watching. We're going to stop talking about real estate. We're talking about, tar, we talking about Carolina right now. I want to go watch that same game. In the Dean Dome, bro, and I have to. Like, I wanted to do it before Dean Smith passed, before he left the team and he's passed. Me too. God bless his heart. I, I wanted to, but it wasn't going to happen. I just wanted the mindset to make it there. Now, I am going to make it to that game, bro. Let me know. I might be in the nosebleed seats, dog, on it, but I'm, I'm be there. I Just let me know. <laughs> just let me know. Same way, bro. Like, I got to be there, man. Since a kid, when they played on ESPN, Dick bro. Vitale. Dick Vitale doing there. Not, I just, I said, yo. And I had a cousin graduate from the uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Now, granted, I'm in grade school when he was there. I used to, I, mean, I understand now, but I used to be like, yo, give me Eric Montrose autograph. Give me yeah, Rashid Wallace autograph. <laughs> and, I want everybody you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but you know, he, he a man. Like, he ain't going to just, hey, bro, let me get your autograph. And I don't think back then they could give out autographs anyway, but you know, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't. Know the exact NCAA rules, but yeah, like um, now the kids can get paid. So, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, like nah, yeah, I was on, bro. I used to come to school with my Tar Heel starter coat. You Dude. know what I mean? Oh, and, whoa, 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 whoa! Don't listen. The Tar Heel starter coat was the greatest item from middle school to high school. I don't care what nobody said. That silky smooth feel on it, the little sheen man. it had on the white, bro. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I had it, I had it dog. I had it too. I, I love that jacket. Finish. Bro. You know what I'm yeah, and I and of course, you know what I mean. I never seen Michael Jordan play as a Tar Heel. I seen him. We, me, me, we both witnessed his greatness and as in the nineties. But yeah, I, I want to say Jordan got drafted in like eighty four, and I I was born in eighty three. So yeah, yeah, Bro, man, but, yeah it's yeah. Yeah, ooh man. Don't give me. I tell you, don't give me. I had the Hornets painted on the wall in my bedroom as a kid when I was living in Virginia. I paint like hand painted. I drew it out. I painted it. I, bro, I wish I had pictures of that. I'll get my parents on here to, to witness. But, man, I was looking at doing – I was going to do a Tar Heels one, too. I was going to put Ramsey's right on the wall. As a matter of fact, I got Ramsey's right behind me. You can see him blurred out, but he's right there. Oh, I see him. Oh. I see him. I see him. All, yeah. all day, every day, twice on Sunday. But, anyway, all right, Nas, we're going to do the outro. Nas, don't go nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for watching. Um, I've been Oliver Perry. This is the Real Estate Duru. Where's my finger there? Real Estate Duru. He's a guru, not a guru, because he actually does this business, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Go check out the ebook. <laughs> Remember, you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. Thank you so much. Love you guys. I'll see you again soon.